Hey everyone, welcome to JoJo's World. Good afternoon, everyone. Whoa. Would you believe we're recording this in the PM? We've had lunch. Uh, amazing. We're the most amazing podcasters around. Lunch is one of the most important meals of the day. Is it? Yes. Oh. Alongside breakfast and brunch. Did you know that people who nibble throughout the day... Grazing tend to lose more weight than people who have set meal times. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's because the baddie hold the baddie? It's the because baddie. the baddie holds the onto... The like Dio and Yoshikage Kira. Uh, good choice. Um, it holds onto the fat so that, you know, when you're waiting for the next meal, it will it has, like, stores. But if you're just nibbling throughout the day, it's like, well, I don't need these, so fuck them. Just get rid of them. Yeah. Cool. Today's facts with Nick. How you be? I'm Liam S. Smith, one of your co-hosts. And I'm Nick Valentine, the other one of the co-hosts. This is our JoJo's Bizarre Adventure recap and discussion podcast where we recap and discuss. talk about... Oh! JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4 Diamond is Unbreakable. Do you reckon that because we're recording... I do the... reckon that. Oh, nice. Do you reckon that because we're recording in the afternoon, everything's going to be slightly more different than it used to be? No. Well, never mind then. I don't reckon that. Well, um... I reckon it's going to be much the same from here on out <laughs> as we discuss... The 99th episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as a whole. And the 25th episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable. Which covers chapters 365 through 370 of the manga. We're one episode away from 100. Yes, and if you count the um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure retrospective spectacular, which I'm not, uh, Uh this would be the 100th episode of our podcast that we've recorded together. Okay. Pretty cool. Do we have any, like, poppers? No. Maybe next week. But also, (laughs) probably not. Probably not at all. Yay go us. Yay go us. Pop. Pop. There's there's the pop. Today's episode... Keep going. ...is brought to you, you lovely viewers, who have subsisted with us for so long, by Polecat. Polecat. An exuberant feline entity that also... No, Nick. No. No? Polecat is the common name for mammals in the order Carnivora, subfamily Mustelinae. Polecats do not form a single taxonomic rank. The name is applied to several species broadly similar to European polecats, the only species native to the British Isles. I see, I see. So what you're saying is it's multiple entities combined into one. None of which are feline. Mmm. Shit. Well then, there you go. And that's right, those multiple entities are supporting our podcast. Thank you, multiple entities. Pole Pole cat. cat. When you need a cat that is also usable for lighting in a street. Like a pole. Come into my house (laughs) and you say that and you're going to keep talking for an hour or so. And I'm just meant to take that. Yes. All right, let's go. Thank you, Pole Cat. Much appreciated. So, Nick. What? Today's episode. Yeah. Atom Heart Father. Correct. That is the name of the episode that we watched today. I'll agree that was the one we watched. Yes. (laughs) Fact check. Did we watch this episode? Yes. Maybe. Really had to work at it this week because the internet was being bad, (laughs) but we watched it. Did we watch or did we struggle to get to watch it? We battled this episode. We battled the Crunchyroll ads this week. Yeah. What's going on there? There's, there's like this weird countdown. Rather than playing ads, you know, like when you're going to watch like an old film and there's that circle where it goes like five, boop, four, boop, three, boop. Yeah. Yeah, it was like that, but like a modern version of that. It was odd. Very odd. Very bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, Nick, this episode. Yes. You might have watched... The previous episode, Rohan Kishibe's Adventure, which of course introduced us to Rami Sugimoto. I might have. And you might have thought like, oh cool, ghosts are real, but it would have been interesting to see what if a ghost was an antagonist instead of just being there, you know? I mean, I didn't, but I'm glad that you But you might up. have. Yeah, well, it's a distinct possibility. <laughs> and this episode answers, what if a ghost was messing with you? What would you do then? Well, I mean, it wasn't me, was it? What would you do, Nick? Um, are you afraid of no ghost? Can I call... Ghostbusters, because I don't like ghosts. Wow. Wow. We're off to a strong I thought start. we were pretty PC here, but wow, you don't like ghosts. Well, I'm just saying, man, they come into the city, they spread their ectoplasm everywhere, okay? They look, they don't look like me, okay? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I mean, all the ghosts in this show look pretty much exactly like you. <laughs> Except they might have slashes through their throats. True. Yeah. True. Just minor differences, like them already being dead. I'm not, I'm not a fan of this, all right? If they want to come into the living world, they should be, you know, more tactful. We open on a close-up shot of a lady's hand sitting on a bed. <gasps> <How> dainty. <laughs> Ooh. 
And she's just this woman we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monologuing with a cat yep, in her lap. A cat sitting on her uh, lap on her bed and she's just like casually stroking it being like, <sighs> I met that boring man when I was in community college. He was at a good school in the area, so I dated him because it made my friends jealous. He was he seemed quiet and cool and he, he made me feel like I was high status when I dated him. And then we had a child. And all the joy slowly <laughs> drained out of my life because he's boring. He's really boring. Not- and then her son comes upstairs just muttering about like shutter speeds and things mm. like that. And she's like, aren't you going to say hi to me, son? And he's all like, uh, uh, it's classic like um, teenage classic, apathy. Like just hit puberty, like uh, withdrawing into his cell, into his cell, his perfect cell. <laughs> Into his prison sentence that is his home. Anyway, so that's my son. Back to my husband. He doesn't drink too much, and even though he doesn't earn much at work, he always goes in. But we're not in love. Ah. This is a loveless household. Who could raise a child in such an environment? Me, apparently. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you say that, Liam, but I suppose I can believe it. And we hear a noise at the front door and she's like, he's home. Ugh. I'm going to be passive aggressive to him. So we get a shot of a hand with a key. Oh, before that, we also just see the um, like the front mailbox with the house name. And we mm. see that the occupants of this house are the Kawajiri family. Father Hayat, No, Father Kosaku. Kosaku. Mother Shinobu. Shinobu, yeah. And son... Hayato. Hayato. Nice. Remember those names. All there will names. be a test. Nick, what are their names? Uh, Hayato. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Shibuya. And, yep. and Hibiki. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad <laughs> I got And what's their horror. family name? Oh, fuck. Uh, Katana. Yep. Okay, thank you. Good, good. So, um, Hibiki <laughs> Katana is getting home. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a, there's, a ha- there's a shot of a hand trying to put a key into a door and it doesn't work and like oh oh better try another key and then do, it quickly do. shifts over to another key and then it quickly shifts to another key and then that one worked and he's like good good and we the viewers can use context clues from the previous episode to deduce that this is Yoshikage Kira and his new identity arriving home mm. but Shinobu just thinks it's her loser husband <laughs> So he walks in. He walks in and he's like, I'm home. Where's dinner? Awful bold first step into your new life. Well, you know, he's probably trying to act normal. and he's-, he's playing it pretty cool. You gotta give him that. Yeah. And she's all, oh, this will really get a rise out of him. Normally the only words he says are food, bath and sleep. But, oh man, what if he got so angry? Wouldn't that be interesting for once? And she says, oh, I was busy today. So that's all there is over there. But it's your favourite, right? And he, he pulls like a white napkin off a cup ramen. And he just goes, this will not do. Not for I, Yoshikage Kira. I mean... <laughs> Go on. Hayato Ka- Kawajiri, who is not a serial killer and hand fetishist by any means. <laughs> so he just wordlessly goes into the kitchen, starts making an omelette. And uh, <laughs> egg. This lady's like, up. "What? what is he doing? What is he doing? Oh, and he turns on his uh, favourite... Uh, Mario Radio. Yeah. Featuring Kai Harada on the evening show as well. So I guess he's just in there all day. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome. Good to- evening, he says. Good evening. Does he say good? Does he say good evening? He says good evening. Wow. He's Dracula. (laughs) Good evening. (laughs) This is Kai Harada for Moriocho Radio. Re. For a brief moment, I almost slipped into a hut voice. (laughs) Ho ho ho. Morio Radio. (laughs) Gula Rubabu. Kai Harada. (laughs) Ho ho ho. Oh, man. You do a much better hut than I do. That would be super weird if Kai Harada was actually a hut in disguise. Yes, that would not be appropriate for this property. I mean, we have ghosts. We so- don't have licensed Star Wars characters. No, but we did have a Nintendo 64 in a previous episode. So obviously licensing not out of the question. And we haven't met Kai yet. Who knows? And will we? I don't fucking know. Will we get that vaunted, once predicted, oh, they go on a school tour to the radio station episode? <laughs> Wait, did I say that? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Well, they better go to that damn radio station. <laughs> he starts cooking and he's all like, what? You're cooking? I didn't even know you could cook. He doesn't say a damn word. Cut to across town, map of the town, narrator's like, 15 minutes by car from the train station in the special <laughs> villa and resort area of Morio. A special villa and resort area. 
Oh, area. Gotcha. That's a word that I said. Yep. I was just thinking, is it some kind that, of villa? Would that be the same area that Koichi was kidnapped to by Yukako? I was thinking it would be. Mm. Would it be the same place? How many, the how many special seaside resort areas can one town have? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Morio, a planned community for ex-samurai families and also rich businessmen who were not here. Do you want a, a house by the seashore? Do you want eight? Do oh you boy, want have I got news for you. To not be in that house so that young women can kidnap young men and just stay there for a while. Have you ever heard about mermaids? Have you ever heard about long-haired females? Have you ever heard about sentient hair? Then have I got somewhere for you where you can get kidnapped. Signic Mario. It's the place to Mori. It's a commuter town for S City. Mori, 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 Mori. As the town motto says. <laughs> Uh, everyone's snooping in Kira's house. Yeah, so we got Josuke, yeah. we got Jotaro, we got Akiyasu, we got Koichi. All the heavy hitters are here. The main four. Yep. No Rohan, no Yukako, no Tonio. A pointless episode is basically what I'm getting yeah. at. No yeah. Dr. Ayasuji, who is oh, dead. No, it's taken from us too soon. No police. <gasps> no police? Come on. Would have been good to bring police. Mm. Yeah, because he could have sniffed things out. He's very lazy, though. Is he? I mean, he looks fat and we only ever see him sleep. <laughs> sleep. <laughs> just, just the assumptions being made are, oh, you know, he's a dog that looks fat. I'm pretty sure Koichi put, called him lazy in an in earlier episode. Oh, okay. In that case, I'll believe what Koichi has to say. He's so wholesome. <laughs> he just sits there. He looks like someone who'd really tell the truth about his dog. Oh, I thought you meant... I thought you meant Alfred was... I mean, not Alfred. I thought you meant Koichi... Not Koichi. I thought you meant police was so wholesome. No, I'm guessing that you said Alfred because you meant to say Arnold, the dead dog. Yes. Who's Alfred? No one. Good. Good. So Alfred's also dead. Alfred's also there. And he's like, what are we doing, guys? Are we investigating this serial killer's house? And he's like, uh, what, what's the name of the bear? Uh, the Yogi. Yogi. He's like Yogi Bear and that he's like a bipedal dog that's a little bit too human. Like Scooby-Doo. Yeah, like, well, no, Scooby-Doo is a What's bipedal. going on, guys? Oh, Ooh, no. Is there a ghost in this house? No, please, no. <laughs> and then he jumps into Okuyasu's arms no. and they both shake and scamper up and down a long corridor. No. We can't have Scooby's Bizarre Adventure. This is, this is it. This is the peak. Is a haunted house. This is peak intertextuality. Yeah. Um, they're all snooping around. This is like a, a peak L.A. Noir Clue Noise episode. Yeah, you were like, oh, Nick. Oh, here we go. They're all basically just like tearing his house apart. Like, oh, look, boo boo. Here's his family album. Hmm. Do you think that. Do you think was... this kid that looks exactly like Kira is Kira? Mm, maybe. Look, here he is at third grade summer camp. Here he is at his first dance recital. Here he is looking pretty average. And then Jodoro takes the book and apparently just turns to a the character profile on Kira in there. Ah, uh, yes. Born January 30, 1966. 175 ki- centimeters. However many kilograms. 60. Blood, blood type A. Blood type A? Blood type A. That's pretty rare, I think. No, actually, it's probably not very rare at all. I don't know. I don't care. I care. Here is a fit picture of his parents. They were old when they had him, and his dad died when he was 21. Oh. Then his mum, not shortly after. Ooh, rough. He was 1998 when he graduated from D University's Department of Literature. D O. Then he got a job at CAMAU and transferred to Morio. My pun goes unnoticed. That's what we call sandbagging. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no girlfriend. He's had no major surgeries. No tattoos. No, no piercings. No scars. Uh, no medical procedures whatsoever. We, can't, we were hoping to identify him via fingerprints, teeth, or scars, but no dice. Nothing. And then, like, Joe Skate's like, boop, boop, look at all these trophies. Huh. Inconclusive. Uh, so they're all third place trophies. In, like, a wide variety of things. So one of them's, like, writing. Writing. And another one's swimming. Probably, like, bowling. Oh, man, how average. Jotaro's all, damn it. Here's a man who doesn't, who deliberately doesn't show his strengths and weaknesses. We were hoping that if, if we could track down some of his hobbies, we might be able to use that. But darn, he's just got a broad swath of interest, which he's deliberately not being very good at hmm. to stay out of trouble. Look, even in this photograph, he's trying not to stand out. And then we see this old photograph. And it's funny that Jotaro <laughs> says that because based on the way this photo is lit, everyone else is in shadow and Kira is just perfectly lit. <laughs> Oh, no, I think they were just doing that to I know, it was a there. cinematic effect, but... but... at the same time, <laughs> he's just there. Everyone else is, like, super happy. Doing, like, peace signs and smiling, and he's just... Boom. 
Just eyeballing the camera. <laughs> just no expression. Ready to murder. Kind of in again. a way that would make him really stand out. Yeah, you'd think so. And yet, totally unnoticeable. Mm, yeah. Just blending into the background. <laughs> Dredero opens up a drawer. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Josuke, that was. Ah. Uh, <laughs> boop, boop. And he finds inside... These jars. Some, some sort of scrapings in these jars. That's Look, weird. they're all labelled by mm. year. That's weird. Why would they be labelled by year? Yeah, let me take out these scrapings and put them on my hand. And they smell weird too. Jotaro looks in the drawer and sees... Nail clippers. Boop boop. <laughs> Deduction. These are fingernail clippings. Josuke immediately goes... <laughs> and just throws them in the air. So they figure out that he's been... Trimming and collecting and measuring his fingernail since 1983, the year he killed Raimi Sugimoto. Hmm. Connection? Yes, I suppose. Okay, then. Jota was all like, that's probably the point he couldn't m- contain his murderous instincts any longer. Oh, man. He's got a real dark passenger. <laughs> Why would he start cutting his fingernails if he wanted to hide his tracks and then keep them in his house? Unless you come into his house and look through his drawers, you're not going to see, right? And even then, seeing that would be like, that's pretty weird, but doesn't imply he's a serial killer. Yeah, but at the same time, why is he doing it all the time now? Well, um, as they exposit now, oh, okay. they see a little a note, little note written in the margin being like, yeah, 30 centimetres this year, I'm on a roll, no one can stop me. Hmm. And Jodoro is like, ah, yes, he's using it as a form of fortune telling. Jewish merchants tracked sunspots to determine how their business would go. And clearly this Yoshikaga Kira, serial killer and hand fetishist, is doing something similar <laughs> to determine if, it's, if fate is on his side. To to do some murders. <laughs> Weird. And look, in this year, the far off future of 1999, <gasps> he's already grown more than 20 centimetres and it's only June. Oh my God. Gads. He's going to kill again. At this point, we get a very quick cut across the room to a camera lens sort of focusing on them. Uh, it's like a Polaroid camera. Yeah, but we don't, well, you don't see it very close up. Hmm. And it just adjusts its lens. Yeah. And they keep talking for a second, then suddenly it, it takes a picture. What? The aperture? The the lens? Chiaroscuro? <laughs> the interplay of light and shadow? My god, the mise-en-scene. Rule of thirds? Good god. We've stumbled upon something here. But we're not sure what, because we don't know enough about photography. <laughs> and then a Polaroid prints out and they're like... That's weird. There might be someone in the house. We should be on guard. Uh, I think Josuke's exact words are, does that mean there's someone else in the house? In a very serious tone. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Maybe he had some sort of accomplice. And Jodoro was like, no, because that would create evidence. Mm. Don't be an idiot. You could rat him out. Stop that. But look, Josuke, hark, for this is how I, Jotaro Kujo, talk now. Prithee and pay attention to me, for there is someone in this photograph which I am holding aloft even now. Tell me more, young Jotaro. And they look in the photograph and, uh... There's a man. A man they recognise from the photo album as Kira's dad. That's odd. Just sort of sitting in the fetal position in the corner. That That is extremely odd. That's ex- exceedingly odd. One might say that's bizarre. But he's in the picture, but he's not here. And they're all like, a g- 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 ghost? Yeah, ghosts are real. So. Yeah, that's basically Jotaro's exact words. Like, yes, ghosts are real, so he could be a ghost. <laughs> You know how we were talking to Raimi before? Yeah. Yeah. Ghosts are real. Ghosts are real. Look, look at the dark expression on his face. Like he wants us to get the hell out of his house. Mm. Like a regular Gran Torino. Gran Torino? Like that Clint Easterwood movie? Oh. I haven't seen it. Neither. Oh. Then how do you know what happened in Gran Torino? I know the gist of it. Like he's an angry old man who's like, hey kids, get off my lawn. Oh no, I'm being accidentally dragged into gang violence. <laughs> Hey, kids, get off my lawn. Fuck you, Dad. I'm a gangster now. Um, I just want you to get well, off I my lawn. I think there's this kid, he wants to get off his lawn because he's like a racist old man. Yeah. And then the kid's like, oh, no, the other gangsters are going to kill me. Help me, racist old man. And this is this, oh. this is our new segment. Liam recaps the plots of a movie he hasn't seen. <laughs> Go on. That's it. Oh, Play the theme. That's it? That's the whole recap? Play the theme. Which theme? Which theme, Liam? No, I'll just pipe it in here. <laughs> it's just like, as I'm screaming in the background, <laughs> What theme, Liam? Do, 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 do,
Do da ba 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 recaps. What? <laughs> That's the theme. <laughs> That's the theme. We've been doing this segment since episode one. What? Yes. The phone's ringing and they get scared. And Josuke says something amazing. Mm-hmm. He says, "Are you trying to scare us with your ghost energy?" <laughs> I mean, let's break this down. Wait when someone tries to scare me with their ghost energy. <laughs> so one, ghost energy. What is it? Who knows? But he's trying to scare us with it. Does Queen Beryl want it to escape the negaverse? Almost certainly. I mean, there's no doubt. Two, is he trying to scare them? With his ghost energy? Probably. Mm. Three, ghosts. They're real. Yep. Do they Fact. scare people? Just yep. for the- With their ghost energy, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Yep. All three questions answered perfectly. We hear a voice through the phone say, answer the phone, slowpoke. And they're both like, no. And the receiver flies across the room and hits Josuke in the face. It's like, I'm not going to wait for you to pick up the phone, big boy. You never call me anymore. (laughs) Get off my lawn. You darn kids up here in my samurai style villa. Wearing your shoes in the house. That's not the way a respectable Japanese man conducts himself. I can tell from your manner of dress that you're some sort of 80s delinquent. It's the 90s, you sick Yes, but I'm dead. Oh, yeah, true. (laughs) You're some kind of 70s delinquent. Does he even know what year it is if he's been stuck in that house this whole... Well, he'd have to because he's been watching Kira. Yeah, he's been around the whole time. Yeah, true. Yeah. What year is it? 1990. (gasps) Oh, no. Something. There's a picture of the Statue of Liberty over there. This was Earth all along. <laughs> Kira comes back. He's actually a monkey in disguise. Yeah. Kira couldn't find a suitable businessman uh, to drag into Dr. Ayasuchi's, but he did find a passing gorilla. <laughs> it was the guy, f- it was the orangutan from, uh, from Strength. Str- no, <laughs> no, we're not bringing back the rape paper. Okay. He's, we're done with him. <laughs> Doing me. Wasn't there another monkey in this show? Um, One that didn't try to rape young girls? Not that I remember. Okay. I swear there was another monkey, though. It could have just been like an ambient monkey in Egypt at some point. That could have been it. He gets that one. If it existed. Which if, it probably it didn't. Or in this case, probably did. Whoa. Or does. Or did it. do 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 Anyway. So everyone's like, oh no, a ghost. And Koichi and Okuyasu are just outside the room. And Koichi's like, good news, guys. We can attack ghosts with our sedans. Hey, that's... And at that's first what... I was like, come on, mate. But then he, he does back it up where he's like, I saw Rohan use Heaven's Door on Raimi Sugimoto before we knew she was a ghost. So mm. it works. And they're all like, oh... Well, that's convenient. Time to punch. Yes. And then Josuke, Josuke rips up the photograph that the go- that ghost dad is in. Mm-hmm. Hoping that that will do something. You're like, oh, I'll just rip him out of the photo. But the only thing that he rips up is himself. Also Jotaro. <laughs> oh yeah, and Jotaro too. Jotaro's head being neatly cut in half, much like Thoth predicted back in the day. Oh, I do fucking love how his head starts coming up. All the inside is like... Stars. Swirling rainbows. Energy. Yeah. And he's just speaking calmly like, Josuke, damage done to the photograph is being done to us. You need to fix it. While his head is raising up. up. (laughs) And he's shooting out cool Jotaro energy the whole time. I know that you said you already had an image in mind for the banner on the website. But this would also be a good one. That would be amazing. But I feel like this one loses something um, if you're not seeing it in motion. That's true. That's true. Because it's just slow and calculated. And he's just not reacting at all. He's all like, Josuke, come on, do it. And Josuke also gets like ripped into three pieces. Um, so then he's like, oh, I should oh, probably fix this. Better fix this photo. So he punches the photo and it gets fixed. Yep. And uh, the old man, who later we learn is named Yoshihiro Kira. Oh. Just for the sake of being able to refer to him. Cool. So Yoshi Kira. Just, yeah, Dad Kira. Dad Kira. <laughs> I'll probably forget his name by next week. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably only remember him as that guy. Yeah, Kira's dad. Kira's dad. That's what most people just call him in my experience because no <laughs> one re- remembers his name. So, Dad Kira, what's new with you? <laughs> oh, not much other Dad Kira. Oh, no, we're two photographs. We're both dads. Oh, <gasps> my God. Um, is all like, oh, you must have the same power as my son. Also me, but I'm not talking about that. <laughs> Mine's a bit different, to be fair. I'm dead. Yes, I'm a ghost. Do I ever stand? Probably, but it's kind of unclear. <laughs> Josuke's exactly. like, Okiyasu, use the hand to cut the old man out of the photo without harming us. 
And Okias is all like, oh yeah, I've got this. Oh yeah. Gonna run on up and just hit him with the owl, it's a wall. And yeah, much like the Kool-Aid man, he slams through the glass window <laughs> on the other side of the, the other side of the room without having even entered it. And he's like, what? Hey? How? And Koichi approaches the entryway to the room and is like, huh. I'm sticking my hands in, but they're coming out on the other side of the room. Creepy. And Koichi's body is also full of cool energy. (laughs) The rainbow star Mm, energy. Yeah. Stand users, what are they like? (laughs) Um, So he reels his hands back and he's like, "Ah, that's weird, I don't like it. Josuke's like, maybe I can try to bust out. But he hits like a hard wall when he reaches the end end of the room. And uh, Kira's dad's all like, (laughs) (laughs) You fool! I have imprisoned you within my photograph. That's right, this new technology moves even into the real world. Yes, you only need to stand still for but 60 minutes and a man with a sheet over his head will capture your image and your soul. Once that's done, the incantation will begin. (laughs) We'll enter a dark red room and put the photograph in a, a clear liquid that will reveal it. Of course, this was a Polaroid camera, so that wasn't necessary. No, I mean, it went way How do past they that. work? What, Polaroid cameras? Because yeah, like, they develop in the, on the spot, you know? Um, I think Google will be able to tell me. I don't think... I care. I care okay. enough that I'm doing it, Liam. Okay. You I... always get to Google things. While you're doing that, yeah. let's talk a little bit about this particular stand. Is it is it even a stand, to be completely fair? Let's talk about this particular stand. Stand man? Atom Heart Father is the name of the stand. Again, it... Hmm. Hmm. The title card of the ad break told us so. Okay. This is the Jojo Valle note for Atom Heart Father. The stand's name comes from the the Pink Floyd album Atom Heart Mother. Ah. The idea came to me because I thought it would be cool to have a cursed or haunted photo as a stand. Every time. Every single time he gives us a new piece of incredible information. This time it's just, I kind of wanted to do this, so I did But that's, that's all of them, though. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I kind of wanted to do that, so I did. It's like, is there anything that he's ever had to do that he didn't want to do? It's his story, man. <laughs> uh, so apparently uh, there is... Uh, okay, instant film. It contains chemicals needed for developing and fixing the photograph, and the instant camera exposes and initiates the developing process after a photo has been taken by... Breaking open a pod containing a reagent that is spread between the exposed negative and receiving positive sheet. Thus... Oh my god, it keeps going. No, that was it. Thus, you get just like... It's like you've got the negative and that goes onto a sheet and there's a pod that sits there on Uh, the positive sheet. Like an espresso pod. Yeah, and it just breaks open and that's what helps develop it. Delicious coffee spews out. Yes. Upon my tongue. But you don't want to hold it to light too quickly, otherwise it'll get blurry and gross. And a ghost will be in it. Piece of trivia from the um, Jojo the Jojo Wiki page for Adam Hartfather. Here we go. The stand's basis is rooted in superstitions of photography capable of capturing the forms and images of ghosts. Mm-hmm. And, all, and an old Japanese superstition from the Meiji era, where it was believed that cameras stole the souls of those who were taking a photo of. Citation needed. Yeah, I don't think um, Araki said that in the Jojo Valley notes. So... But I know what they're driving at. Like, yeah. there is a there's a long history of people being like, cameras steal souls, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I mean, they do. Adam Hart Mother, as alluded to in the Jojo Valley note, is a Pink Floyd album. A lot of Pink Floyd in part four, as we've mm. noticed. I've, mm. I believe we've got um, Echoes. Killer Queen. Nope. Uh, Sheer Heart Attack. Nope. Freddie Mercury. Yep. Shit, who's the guitarist for Queen? Brian May. I was going to say Brian Leo Malley, but I think that's the guy who did Scott Pilgrim. (laughs) Uh, You've got uh, Scott Morrison. As you pointed out, the album art for Atom Heart Mother, the the fifth studio album by Pink Floyd, Uh is a nice picture of a cow done by Hypnosis. The G is silent there, but I wanted to pronounce it so that if any any enterprising listeners wanted to look it up, they wouldn't just type Hypnosis. Yeah. Um, Question. Is it grazing? No, it's just kind of standing there and looking at the camera. Hmm. Is it a painting or a photo? It looks like a photo, but... Upon closer inspection... Is it? Upon closer inspection, it looks like a photo. Hmm. Maybe it's just a really good painting. And according to the um, Jojo Wiki, Mm -hmm. the namesake for Yoshihiro Kira is, well, um, a figure that they call Yoshihisa Kira, but then it redirects to the Wikipedia page for Yoshinaka Kira. Okay. A Japanese noble and master of ceremonies. <gasps> like Famous a samurai? Yeah. Famous as the adversary of Asaso Naganori in the events of the 47 Ronin. 
Oh! Ah, uh, here we go. Although his name has been long pronounced as Yoshinaka, especially in dramas and novels, uh, Ekasui Remberoku, written by an... Oh, so that's the name of a publication. Okay. Written by an anonymous contemporary in 1703, recorded that his name was Yoshihisa. Ah. Recent findings on Keio, uh, marked on his own letter preserved in Ketsu Temple, confirmed that his real name should be read as Kira Yosh- Yoshihisa. Citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if you just go to this place... Uh, where his grave is, it'll tell you the right answer. If his grave exists, that is. Whoa, if his ghost doesn't get you first. Oh, shit. Maybe that's where all this contention has come from, because every time people go there to confirm, the ghost gets them first. I hate when I'm trying to solve a ghost mystery and a ghost gets me. Oh, so annoying. I hate being killed by ghosts. While we're having this little interval uh-huh. from the recap, uh, so the fingernail clipping. Yes. That pretty heavily links in with the OP chase. Um, you may recall that we get a lot of... Close-up shots of fingernails being clipped in that. Did we? Yes. Did we actually? Yes. Maybe if you've actually watched it instead of just <laughs> complaining about it every week. I didn't... What? There weren't... What? There weren't nail clippings in there, though, were there? Yeah. What? It's like... What? Do you want me to show you? Yes, I do. Did you see it? I saw a thumb. I, I vaguely saw a thumb. Yeah, no, I was never going to get that. That's like half a second of thumb. That's not a thumb. That's a fingernail being clipped. That's a fingernail being... Is there any more fingernails being clipped? It probably doesn't help that I didn't see this at the start of the episode either. Not in this episode. Mm. And Ooh. I I may be wrong on this. Uh-huh. But I believe you'll never see it again. <laughs> oh, today is a good day, Liam. <laughs> today is a beautiful day. Truly. I've beaten the studio. There might be one more. I might be wrong. No, but don't, I know bring, don't we're, bring we're, me down. We're getting very near the end Stop. of the chase run. Stop bringing me down with there might be another chase. If there's another one, I'll just kill myself. <laughs> I'll kill someone while they're clipping their fingernails. Oh, you hear, David Productions, listen to me. They got rid of In chase. the past. <laughs> they love me. They don't like chase. It's good. Good work, David. You're a good lad. Dave. Yeah. Dave Lil Davey. <laughs> Lil Davey. Little Davy P. Little Davy Pro. <laughs> G'day guys, it's me, Little Davy Pro. I'm here to show you the animation that I've put together. Oh, hey Davy, let's have a look at this. All right, here we go. It's called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay, all right. So, um, why... Sono Chino Sadame. You've done it. You've done perfectly. <laughs> Keep up the good work, lad. Keep up. What have you got for me next? I don't think they actually made that theme song animation, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it's a damn shame. So they're trapped in this photo. They're not trapped in the photo. Well, they are because they can't escape the... They're trapped in the metaphorical photo. Yeah. And yeah. Their, their souls are trapped in the photo. Ooh. Uh, like Yoshihiro goes on this big dumb rant about how like, you're not even in the room, you're in the photo because I'm a ghost that lives within a photo and I can control the dimension of any photo I appear in. I can trap the souls of others using the camera and reflect damage mm. done to the photo with the blah, 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 blah. You all know how it works now. You know how stands work. They just kill people. Anyway, gonna kill you now. And he looms next to Josuke's head with a big, big knife. And he's all, no, stop. And then Jotaro just casually walks out of frame in the background. <laughs> Is this when he's all like, I've given up, Jotaro. Well, yeah, J- yeah, Josuke starts entreating him to do something with the all-powerful star platinum. He's and like, dude, make your invincible stand do something, man. And he's like, nah, man, ghosts are hard. I'm giving up. It's Time like- stop point help here. What are you talking about giving up? When something's useless, I give up. That's the quality I, Jotaro Kujo, am best known for. Uh, what? That's why when my arch nemesis Dio Brando was like, useless, 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 I was like, you're right, I'm going to give up. (laughs) And yeah, in the photograph, he cuts off both Josuke and Jotaro's head. And then in reality, a a drawer (laughs) opens and a knife comes out and starts to fly at Josuke. He tries to punch it away, but uh... His fists just go through it. <gasps> My god, it's not a real knife. Or rather, it's, he can't stop it's the, fate. It's the ghost of a dead knife. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jotaro's all like, yeah, I'm giving up on killing the old man. But you know what I'm not giving up on? My dreams. Yeah, of being a marine biologist. <laughs> so he takes a photo of the photo that they were in before. For a brief moment, I thought... You were just going to say something like, so he pulls out this shark. <laughs> um, he, he holds up the, the Polaroid they've been looking at this whole time, mm-hmm. right up into the lens of the camera and takes another photo, thereby isolating Yoshihiro Kira in a... Uh, <gasps> what? In a photo that's just him. <gasps> what? Removing his influence from the world they're in. Yes. 
So there should be a tiny patch of this room right in front of that camera lens where if they tried to stick their hands in it, it would just go through the other side, right? Yes, but it'd be super small. Yeah. It'd be like, yay big. Nick's just holding his hands out with about the size of a, of a Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now that I think about it, that is about the size of a Polaroid, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Or a coaster. <laughs> sure. Mmm, <laughs> delicious coasters. <laughs> Why are you why are you saying mmm to a coaster? Josuke touches the knife that's just hanging in midair and it falls to the ground. And now he seems con- relieved that, that he's was not convenient. Die. Yeah. And now the best thing happens. Ever. Yeah. Just ever. This guy is now trapped inside this photograph. And Jotaro, cool collected, so cool, Jotaro Kujo, turns to Josuke and says, Josuke, say something to him. Something cool. Let him have it. This is the most important part of your mentorship. And Josuke, unfazed by what's happened earlier, goes, Um, I wasn't even scared of you ghosts it's, anyway. It's not like I'm scared of you, Barker. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> the ghost is like, Ah, oh, you must be one of those Sundere heroes. Yeah. <laughs> I just love every time Jotaro does something like that. Do you remember back in, um... Dark Blue Moon, Deep Blue Moon, whatever it was called, mm-hmm. the Fishman battle. Yeah. When, like, when they first thought they defeated Captain Captain Tenniel slash Captain Dragon and th- threw him into the ocean, and he was like, "We did it, Avdol, say something." <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to give others an opportunity to shine. Yeah, yeah, he just he just loves a good one-liner, but he doesn't want to have to deliver them all the time. <laughs> Deep down, he's really just a teacher. You mm-hmm. know, he yeah. wants to see his students learn from his one-liners. Yeah. I just love, like, the, the tiny subplots that run throughout this part of Jotaro, like, trying to mentor Josuke into a cool stand guy. Like, everything that happened in Let's Go Hunting and... Yeah. Where he's like, hang on, slow down. Let's go shoot some cans. Okay, now we can move on. Yep. Let's go. Now you just have to think clearly and mm-hmm. keep your head down. Don't be a fool. And you went against all that advice and I enjoy that you did that. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Good work. That's the most important part. Yeah. I mean, after all, that's what I did from my own grandfather's device to defeat, uh, advice to defeat Dio Brando. Mm. Yare, yare. Good grief. End scene. Has anyone ever drawn uh, Jotaro Kujo and Iggy in the yes. style of... Um, oh, here we go. Yep. Charlie Brown and Snoopy. And he's thinking, good grief. <laughs> I'll bet you someone has. Good. You gotta look it up, aren't you? No. Okay. Maybe later, but not right now. Oh, okay. I mean, they have to have done that, right? It's Iggy and Jotaro. They're pretty cool. It's the power couple. So they've trapped this guy in this photograph. And he's all like, Ooh. Oh, I'm trapped in a smaller photograph. But hey, you know what? I can get out. Can you? And then Jotaro opens a, opens a drawer, just grabs some some tape, folds that photograph in half, tapes it up, pins it to a... Uh, a wall? It's going to lower the uh, the resale value of the house. Oh, no. Oh, you've got a tiny hole in the wall here. Oh, dear. Um, and so he's all like, yeah, good luck getting out of that. Oh, he also smashes the camera just for good measure. Mm. Uh, Fair point. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to get caught do by Do you camera. think that he can do that with any camera or it has to be his special camera? I imagine it's a bit like Hermit Purple where mm. you can do it with any camera. Except he doesn't have to break them. Yeah. I still love that at first he was like, yeah, I have to break the camera. And then later he's like, oh, I don't have to break the camera. <laughs> Oh, well. I got money to burn. I'm a real estate mogul. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it's just any camera would do it, to be fair. Okay. So, they, yeah, they pinned him to the thing. It's like, clearly there's something here or he wouldn't have bothered attacking us and revealing himself, right? Mm. Yes, that makes sense. Let's find it. You two, you two idiots, go and search in the room with the ghost. And us two protagonists, me and Josuke, are going to go over there. <laughs> so, they leave the room, leaving Koichi and Okiyasu alone with this tacked onto the wall photograph containing the dead ghost of a dead man. So he's all, um... Oh, what are we, what are we looking for? Is this your Okiyasu? I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I, I think it's something that Koichi would have been saying, but I was doing a more okiyasu voice, you know? Oh, Reverb, what are we going to do now? Echoes. Oh, Reverb! <laughs> could, you, could you imagine if you just switched their voices? <laughs> oh, Koichi... I'm so glad that you love me for the face I have. Ah, it's no problem! <laughs> He's got like Bobcat Goldthwait voice. <laughs> got that real Gilbert Gottfried yeah. like, style. <laughs> eh. 
Oh, man. Okay, yeah, we're searching in here. Oh, how do we know what we're looking for? I don't know, but if the dad reacts to it, that'll be a good sign. And then dad is like, oh, I'm trapped in here. Maybe if I hatch a cunning gambit, I'll be able to escape. So he uh, he shouts out at the top of his lungs, help me, help me, I cannot breathe. Ah, for I am trapped in a photograph. It catches the soul, and I am but a soul. Quite ironic that my own gambit would be hoisted against me, much like my own petard. Da, 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 da. And then What's he, that? That's Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Concerning okay. Hobbits? No. Concerning is, the fate of that's our That's the land. name of the song though. Wait, is it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. The um the Hobbiton thing? Yes. Yeah. I just call it the that Hobbiton song thing. Lord of the Rings. Uh b- 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 so, Okiasu and Sidebar, are like... Sidebar, you know, um, my petard is one of my top five things to be hoisted by. Your petard? Yeah. What is my petard? You know this expression, hoisted by your own petard? No. What? Is, what, is, what? Okay. That's a thing? It's time for the next step in your education, oh, Nick. Jesus. <laughs> you, you say someone has been hoisted by their own petard when, like, they've been, they've been setting up something and it's turned against them. Or... Much like or, this joke. Or if they have a particular gimmick... Uh, then then that has been, you know, like, turnabout is fair play, you know? Right. So it's like all's fair in love and war kind of thing. But... No. Okay. <laughs> it's like, why do you keep opening audacity? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> You've been hoisted by your overtard, Clearly. sir. Clearly. That's not, not, not quite what it means. But... It is now. <laughs> I'm, I'm hijacking what it means. What is a petard? I didn't realise this. A petard is a small bomb made of a metal or wooden box filled with powder used to blast down a door or to make a hole in a wall. Hoist with his own petard is a phrase from Hamlet that has become proverbial. The phrase's meaning is literally that a bomb maker, a petard is a small explosive device, is blown up or hoisted off the ground with his own bomb. Right, so it's not, it's not really either of the words that are being said. But it is kind of the words that are being said. That's old English, you know. You get exploded by your own bomb. You get hoisted yeah. by your own petard. Well, that makes more sense to you now, right? Yes, it makes a lot more sense but now. But you can see why they use the more poetic Shakespeare line, right? <laughs> uh, looks like you got blown... <laughs> looks like you got exploded by your own bomb, Sonny <laughs> Jim. <laughs> you absolute you chad. bastard. <laughs> That's going to be my new saying now. Oh, it looks like you got exploded by your own bomb. People are like, what the fuck are you on about? It's like, you know, it's Hamlet. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Learning together. <laughs> Hoisted by your own petard. So anyway, he's in this photo. Dad Kira. Dad Kira. He's in this photo and he's all like, oh, help me, I cannot breathe. I'm old and withering. Even though he's already dead. Yep. And uh, Koichi's like, oh, I'm full of compassion. Maybe we should open him up. And Okiyashi's like, eh, don't worry about it. That was not at all a good Gilbert Gottfried at all. No. He's I all thought like, Koichi was the one voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, that's right. We're switching the voices. Yeah. Koichi's all like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's sh- I, can't, I can't even do it's just so shitty so, voices. so wrong for his character. You can't even get it out. I know. <laughs> Koichi's all like, eh, maybe we should help him. Let's do it. Uh, he's Al Pacino now. <laughs> or like Robert De Niro. And uh, Okiasu is all like, uh, oh, help me. No, my friend. For <laughs> clearly he is having you on. And then uh, the dad Kira is well, all uh, like. Koichi's like, um, I'm not gonna, even going to try. <laughs> okay. He just says, uh, well, I'm claustrophobic, so I get it too, you know. Mm, don't we all? And, oh, the best thing happens. The second best thing in this episode happens. Mm. Because Okiyasu is like, uh, I'll quit your whining. We'll, we'll give you a hole to breathe through. I'll give you plenty of holes with these tacks. And he puts all these tacks, like a dozen more tacks along the folded part of the photo uh, into the post. And then he does this really weird laugh. <laughs> no, he's like, gah, gah, gah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like he's trying to cough, but he's laughing. Yeah. It's... Ugh. He's all like, uh, Josuke's gonna love this one. Ga ga ga. I can't even do it. No, it's just... It's so guttural. <laughs> it sounds like... Yeah. It sounds like, like a, a droid Like a woodchuck. Like a wood... Wood... Woodchucker. A wood truck. A wood slowly truck. gnawing on a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, um, my Transformers OC. Hey, it's me, wood truck. Does he turn into? Uh, is he like, like a, a beast? Wars well, he's guy? like a um, he's like a lumber mill sort of 
lumber hauling truck. He's a giant truck, and then when he turns out of a truck, he turns into a giant bipedal man. Oh, he's a triple changer. Um, yeah, so he turns into a big robot, but he can also turn into a big woodchuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's a woodchuck a beaver? It's a beaver-like creature. I don't think it's exactly the same. Hmm, okay. I don't know a lot about North American mammals. Well, they do tend to enjoy two and a half men, so... Don't get it. Uh, I was making fun of two and a half men, which is a terrible show. Okay. How you going? <laughs> And uh, so Yoshihiro Kira, again, quite resourceful, is like, tax her? Oh, I see. I'm on the post. Yes, now I know exactly what I need to do to get out of here. This is how humans laugh. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, yes. I finally tricked them all. He makes a lot of ruckus in there. Photo seems to warp and... I was wondering, is the reason why Okiyasu has those giant scars on his face... Because they fold out to reveal, like, his true alien interior. Yeah, sure. If that's what you need. <laughs> He's like that creature at the start of Men in Black. Uh, what? Which one? The one that's, like, a tiny alien piloting a human robot. Oh, the tiny, tiny guy. Yeah. Not the five little insect-looking dudes. No, the worms. They're awesome. Yeah. Is it just, like, the little blob guy who's sitting in the suit? Yeah. Right. So, then he goes silent after he makes all this ruckus. Silence. Oh, maybe he has escaped. Oh no, maybe he tricked us. No, Okiyasu, he's tricking you now. <laughs> did you? Did says you not everyone this? who's watching the show. <laughs> Literally, you and I were both like, um, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> I better open the photo up just to see if he's still in there. Again, no, not how that works. No, just stop that. He's doing it anyway. And as soon as he opens it up, a thread emerges from the photograph because that's a thing that can happen apparently. Yep. Um... And it's a thread from the sleeve of Yoshihiro Kira. Mmm. From his pyjama shirt. And I guess he sort of lassos a, a snag on the wall or something and pulls himself over there. Later on in the series, we just straight up see this guy flying around. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's fair. But now, for now at least, he's like lassoing himself around with this thread from his sleeve. He needs to Batman, is what you're saying. And he goes through a, a crack in the, um, in the ceiling mm-hmm. and he comes out in a few moments... In the next room where, oh, everyone's like, Jotaro, Jotaro, he escaped. And Jotaro leaves the other room. And Josuke, in the other other room, uh, pulls out a drawer. And he's like, what? The bow and arrow? But we got that from Red Hot Chili Pepper and put it in the Speedwagon Foundation. He holds it up and he's all like, but if Could there be another set? Here it is, where I live and breathe. Here in Morio, sleepy town with a dark secret. Of all places. Gads. And then... Kira comes through the ceiling. Kira Senior, that is. Ah, uh, Kira Dad. Steel uses his thread and apparently his massive, tiny upper body strength <laughs> to... He is a ghost. ...lasso the arrow and steal it. And I guess he pulls it into the photograph with him because then he escapes through a crack in the ceiling again. <laughs> Escapes out the roof, lassos himself a crow, and flies away in the best shot in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure history. And he's just there like, those damn meddling kids. I was so- this is definitely going to be the banner image for our episode, but I was saying to you before, imagine just showing someone that one still of a man in a photograph holding what looks to be an arrow or a spear tied onto a crow. Just yelling, fly, Alistair, fly! I'll get you, you little kids. Oh, man. It's fucking ridiculous. And is all like, Rirosuke, what are we going to do now? Was that really your Okiyasu? That was my Scooby. <laughs> but, like, why is Okiyasu now Scooby-Doo? Because he's dumb, like Scooby-Doo. He's the team dog. <laughs> <laughs> Okiyasu, team dog and man in disguise. <laughs> Uh, so Josuke's You wear like, a disguise, you think you're human wise, but you're not a man, you're a dog, Akuyasu. The hell was that? That was the theme for Chicken Boo, a classic Animaniacs cartoon. Ah, there you go. Man, you remember Animaniacs? Sure do. Holds up. I bet it does. It's goddamn amazing. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Animaniacs and not the yet. amazingness that is all of it. <laughs> Akuyasu's like, ah, oh, nuts, he fooled me, he escaped. And Jotaro, I think he's been quite charitable when he says... No, Okiyasu. He was just a too powerful opponent for us. Pat, pat. <laughs> now, we did manage to stick him up against a wall inside his we entrapment. We did perfectly defeat him and then you let him go. But he was just too tenacious for us. Truly, he is Kira's father. 
Kira dad. Whoa. And he's all like, ah, 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 now I'll use this arrow to make more enemies for you. I'll give you some sort of boss gauntlet to stop you from fighting my son. Uh, it's like a monster of the week format. Mm, yeah. Uh. Just like the start of the season, but like it mirrors it in a really cool way, you know? No, not particularly. Because the game changed last week and this is part of the new game. Oh, I see. We've gone from um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure to JoJo's Uber Gauntlet. Sure. <laughs> JoJo's Twin JoJo's Tips. Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> Now you'll have to get through infinite bosses to defeat me. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, um, he flies off on his crow, uh, holding the <laughs> bow and arrow. Did he get he the just bow? took the arrow because yeah. that's the important yeah. part. He took the as arrow. He makes explicit. Um, and he flies off. And Joda Rose all like, ah, photo. I thought there might be more than one set. Now we know how Dio got so many stand users in such a short amount of time. Because I guess he just gave it to all these lads and we're like, hey, go, go shoot a bunch of people for me. Mm, mm. Enya must have given it to Kira like he gave it to Mr. Nijimura and then later Keicho got it from him. Why did Enya give it to them? To make stand users? Because remember also, I, I guess that means that that Kira's dad must have been loosely affiliated with Dio. Yeah. Uh, because, or unless Enya just wanted to sow some chaos. Because, um, of course, the reason Okuyasu's dad is so donked up is because he's got one of Dio's flesh buds in his head, which went nuts when he died. Ah, uh, true that. Man, Dio got around. Mm. He got around. And not just around the world. Oh, Oh, he put his flesh in other people. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sure. And um, Dad Kira is all like, uh, Oh, my son. You could never help it that you wanted to kill women. <laughs> but I'll support you anyway. Because you're my son and I want you to be happy. Anyway, gonna go make some bosses now. Uh, morally questionable. I don't think even questionable. <laughs> I just think morally deplorable. <laughs> But he loves his son. Who lo- when, Who when, loves killing Do you women. remember a few weeks ago, a few months ago, um, there were a bunch of us talking about like the various dad rankings of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure characters? No. Oh, this might have been in a Facebook chat you're not in. Um, oh. But um, we were talking about like good dads versus bad dads in the franchise. Okay. So obviously like one of the worst dads is um, Dio's biological father, who's just an all round awful person. <laughs> Who literally was just like, you fucking useless son. Yeah. Uh, George Joestar is a bit uh, iffy because, like, he was a good enough father to um, to jo- uh, Jonathan, but he also enabled Dio. Mm, mm. Uh, Joseph I- also a bit iffy because he was really good to Holly, but well, also like Tomoko was like cheated on Susie Q with Tomoko, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know he's trying to make it up to Josuke, but it could be too little, too late. Mm. But they have bonded over that invisible baby. What about George Junior? He never really knew his son, you know. Died when he was but a wee babe. But is he a good or a bad dad for saving the world from vampires, briefly? Unclear. Hmm. Hmm. Absent dad, at least. Jotaro's dad, terrible dad. <laughs> Just always away on tour. Oh, yeah. Who is Jotaro's dad? Just a jazz musician. Oh. He can't be that bad, surely. He provides. I mean, we never see him. Yeah, that's true. You'd think someone would have called him and been like, hey, so, um, particularly near the end of part three, like, hey, so mum's just about to die, like, tomorrow. You might want to come see her. Hey, just putting it out but there. But that would be to acknowledge the possibility of defeat. Mm. What about, um, Josuke's dad, but not real dad? His grandfather? Re- yeah. Yeah, he seemed pretty good. Yeah, he's a good dad. Yeah, he inspired Josuke to protect his city. The point being, of bringing that up, uh-huh. is that it's kind of hard to uh, figure out if uh, Yoshihiro Kira is a good dad or a bad dad. <laughs> because, like, he's very supportive of his son. Yeah. But his son is a very bad person. Yes, correct. He's like um, Dexter's dad. He clearly loves him very much. You know, Dexter was all like, hey, I need to kill things. And his dad was all like, well, listen. Just kill bad people. So clearly even yeah. he's a better dad than, uh, than Kira's dad. Didn't the dad and Dexter be all like, I never watched Dexter. Oh, I think his whole thing was like, okay, listen, you can only kill like dogs, okay? Because dogs die all the time. Like people run over That's them. That's true. They're not ten and a half dead dogs. Yeah, ten and a half whole dead dogs. Yeah, and so then he was just like, I... I'm going to kill a person. He's all like, don't kill a person. He's like, I'm going to kill a person. He's like, well, if you're going to do that, you got to learn how to cover up your tracks properly. Otherwise, you're going to Jeez. go to jail. Yeah. Because he was in so deep, you know? Mm. Mm. Or something like that. I don't know how he rationalized it. It's all fiction. Yeah. Back at the Kawajiri household. Uh-huh. Oh, Shinobi. 
Shinobu. Shinobu. Shinobi is like a female ninja or something. Yeah, you can play them in uh, For Honor with a giant sword thing. Giant um, bow staff glaive thing. Oh yeah, like a, like a halberd. Yeah, except it's mad OP because it doesn't show you what direction it's going to come from. So you're like, oh, what direction is it going to come from? I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Back at the Kawajiri household. Yep. Uh, Kasaka Kawajiri, aka Yoshikage Kira, serial killer and hand fetishist, uh-huh. is uh, silently serving two plates of omelettes for his new wife and himself. And she's all like, what? For me? Eat your cooking? How stupid are you? Wait, why are you walking onto the other side of the room to trim your fingernails? I thought you trimmed them last night. Golly, they must g- grow quickly. Which is like a weird synchronicity with the fact that, like, this year Kira's nails are growing pretty quickly. Mm. But that's not at all why she thinks it's odd that he's trimming them, them again. Maybe... Well, it could be two things. Because well, her husband, her real husband, mm. obviously just trimmed his last night. Or did he? Maybe he lied about it to get away from her. <laughs> okay, I don't really think that's necessarily. I mean, the evidently point of the scene. <laughs> it's, it's evidently, it's a it's a bad marriage. You know, who knows? Who knows? New boss. <laughs> or either that, or it's just soul energy is just flying through these fingers. Sure, you know? yeah. Um, but yeah, so she doesn't know it's that it's a new person clipping his fingernails. So, mm. But she also doesn't know that his fingernails are growing pretty quickly this year. Yeah. She eats it like, wow, you're actually a really good cook. Oh, wow. I shouldn't tell him that. Ad break. It's the next day. You mean countdown? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Interstitial weird countdown video that we got instead of ads. It's the next day. We got like three of the countdowns. To- anyway. The cat's at the window upstairs and it wants to get in. It's been shut out. Oh, you must have been crying all night at the top of the tree because you couldn't get in. I'm going to go give that good for nothing husband a piece of my mind. Burst into the Japanese style bathroom like, hey, what the fuck? I like how you had to preface that with Japanese style. Well, because he's, uh, he's under shower water, but he's also standing at a mirror shaving his face. Yeah, but... And he's not in a shower. He's just like in an open area with a drain and a tap in the ceiling. Yeah, but the fact you have to preface it with Japanese style shower if they live in Japan. All right. <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm like, just saying it's just a normal bathroom there. But you, yeah, but it's it's atypical for you or I. Oh, okay. All right. Right. I mean, I have a mirror like, in my you, bathroom. But you don't have one of those bathrooms where you like you know like where you sit on the stool and like you just pour a bucket over your head. Why am I a king? <laughs> <laughs> I shower in a ditch full of damp mud like a normal man of the people. Just like the rest of us do, Liam. Come on, get off your high horse. The cat picks up something on about Kiara and runs away. Uh, and or tries to run away. It freaks out in her grasp. And the lady's all like... Aww. Sorry. Shinobu is all like... Shinobu. <laughs> Shinobu is all like, oh, what's up with the cat? And he's all, cats hate water. I'm sorry. I shut the window without thinking. I won't do it again. This is how I speak now. And she's all like, man, he's acting a bit weird. He's changed some. He's cooking. He's shaving with a blade rather than just using an electric razor. He always got razor burn when he used a blade. Huh. He's acting like some sort of... New man. Samurai (laughs) using a blade. Hating cats. The landlord's here. He's all like, hey, punk. You're a month overdue and another month overdue. Yeah, give me the money. It's 2006. No, 260... Yeah, yeah. 260,000 yen. That's and including this and last month. you got to pay now. And Show Wow is all like... Shinobu. Oh, sorry. Sham Wow is all like, oh, man, we don't have that kind of money. Hurry. Hu- I mean, honey, hurry upstairs to the safe and get the money. You're the only one who knows the combination. And Kira's like, yes, the safe. <laughs> <laughs> we get a very beautiful close-up of his eyes. His dead eyes. And his- then in between... We should talk about his new appearance, actually. Because it's interesting, like, his design. Yeah. So he's wearing this white suit, um, which is going to be like his signature white suit from this point out. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's got this black spiky hair. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I noticed while doing editing work on last week's episode for the first time that the man, the Kasaku Karajiri that we see slumped over dead in Salon Cinderella Mm -hmm. just has like very flat combed over hair. Isn't that Kira's hair? No, because it's black. Oh. I see. So clearly, like, we, he spiked something's it up. happened in this swap here where, like, she did swap their hair, obviously, because he's got the black hair now. Yeah. But, like, he's he's brought new life to it. <laughs> he's got that real serial killer hand fetishist mm, look yeah. about him. I will say, he looks a lot more like a serial killer slash hand fetishist Yeah, he's, he's got, like, his eyes are just, like, black pits. Yeah. He doesn't have, like, a, an iris and a... His face is oddly proportioned. 
to the point where it's just enough like Kira that you're like, oh, it's Kira, but enough and far away from Kira that you're like, oh. When we saw him nude shaving in the showers, shower zone... He was quite ripped. But, like, weirdly ripped. Like, very odd proportions, I yeah. thought. Almost like certain parts of his body weren't always parts of his body. <gasps> Liam, you wouldn't dare think that he's a vampire. Whoa. No. Oh, that well. What I was driving goes, at at there all. There goes my theory. <laughs> um, yes, the safe. No, not the safe. Let me go downstairs and talk to him man to man. Because I don't need to go to the safe. I have the money. Except I don't have all the money. Hey, Mr. Landlord. Let me just check the episode page for this because I'm sort of half remembering. Um, yeah, in the manga, there was a scene where he went up to the safe and was like, fuck, I don't know how to open this. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks up there and goes, you know, I know there's some turning and I, I think Shinobu is in the room as well. So he's like, oh, I can't just have Killer Queen busted open because she'd see. Yeah. So he walks down the stairs and goes, Hey, Landlord, it's so kind of you to come this early. I'm a little short at the moment, but... And Landlord jumps in like, No, money now! So we L- see... Live within your means. You shouldn't be buying all that avocado toast if you want to rent my wonderful house. If you wanted better internet, you'd just move. Mm. Um, so he... So, yeah, Killer Queen shows up behind him and... Yeah, and does it like a quick... Karate chop motion as it's wont to do. Uh, right on the buckle of the bag. satchel. Sorry, the satchel. Indiana Jones had one. Yep, mm. sure. <laughs> that the other landlord has, and then Kira's like uh, a bit short. Not for rent though. Just yeah, you didn't let me finish. You see, I've only got oh five hundred thousand yen or so. So that'll be last month, this month, and the next two months too, right? I'm afraid that's all I can pay in advance. If that's all right with you. And the landlord's like, what? All right. You're my new favorite tenant. I won't see you again for a while, giving you plenty of time to settle into the life you've been living for some time. (laughs) Kasaku (laughs) Kawajiri. So he leaves, chuffed with himself. Yep. And uh, And Shinobu's like, I'm so turned on right now. So I know that he was really boring before, but now seeing him cook for me. This is a, this is a really cool shot, actually. She's um standing on the stairs, mm. and she's she's straight up saying to him like, "Hey, I know you just stole that guy's money," mm. and he's just got her back to her. He's back to her, and he slowly turns. It's like I know he stole from him. I know he cooked my meal. He locked out the cat. He's shaving differently, and I don't know why I feel this way. But holy yeah. fucking shit, he's so romantic. People would fear him and think he's kind of a lowlife if they knew. But I'm kind of into it. This is the first time in five years I've been interested in my husband. Man, take me now. And like she's getting sparkles and flowers on the screen. She's and blushing. So this is something we're going to be seeing a fair bit over the next our next few in looks into Kira's new life. The slow descent the, into emotional abuse. Well, the, the the burgeoning weird relationship between him and uh, Shinobu Kawajiri. I see. Uh, where she's like, he's being like cool and dangerous because he's a crazy serial killer. And mm. she's like, oh, he's so interesting now. And this isn't necessarily, I think, the intent of the text. Yeah. But I think it's interesting that he's ended up in this situation via the power of Dr. Ayasuji, who, of course, advertised <laughs> that her makeup would bring you love. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you think that it wasn't necessarily that he Araki started off being, being like, OK, we'll just like we'll just flick it so that he's, you know, he's off in this different house. But just like pure accident, he was like... I mean, it could be intentional for all I know, but uh, yeah. it's, it's never made explicit if that is the case. The only way we'll know is if we get some kind of interview with him. Mm. Mm. Which we never will. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's really cool. <laughs> and that's basically the end of the episode. <laughs> to be continued. Uh, so, Nick. Yes. What are our highlights and lowlights for Atom Heart Father? I think you know what my highlight is. Go on. Alistair, rise, you foolish crow. <laughs> crow shot. Crow shot. Just... The crow. Him him riding on that crow. It's very good. It's just, it epitomizes everything that JoJo's is about, doesn't it? Care to guess what my highlight is? Uh, flying crow. No, because that's um, yours. Is it, per chance, Josuke's cool line? Well, more so than Josuke's cool line, it's Jotaro saying, hey, say Josuke, something. <laughs> say something cool now. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me he does it more. Oh, I don't later. recall. I don't oh, recall. God damn it. I just love if he did. <laughs> just because he's like, hey. I mean, they, they can never be something. enough of that. Oh, it's so good. Low light? Low lights. 
Uh, I just want to oh, say... I want, I want to give an honourable mention in the highlights to Kira's, like, robbing the landlord ploy, too. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Particularly given, like, the, oh, shit, I can't get into the safe thing. <laughs> I just love that shot where he's got... It's his eyes, and in the background's the safe, and he's like, safe. Yes. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, yeah, so... Low light. I reckon my low light is Okayasu and Koichi being like, oh, we better set him free. Because mm, yeah. even after that... They're just being idiots, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's fair. And it's like, there is somewhat of a reason why they might act that way, but at the same time, if I remember correctly, it was Roger Ebert who uh, originally said that they shouldn't act like idiots in any media, and I feel like they were just acting like idiots. Because I'm a pretentious <laughs> critic now. <laughs> I know I get kind of pretentious in this show sometimes, but uh, I guess I've really been exploded by my own bomb now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, what's your low light? Oh, good you, question. You exploded <laughs> bomb man. <laughs> um, what was the word? P-bird? Petard. Petard. I'm, I'm very surprised you haven't heard that expression before. Hoisted by your own petard. Yeah. Mr. Smith. Wow, that does sound pretentious. Like, hoisted by your own petard. My low light Smith. is the shot that transitions us back from Dad Kira flying away to the uh, final scene of the uh, Kawajiri household, mm. which is a tracking shot of some... Poo dropped by the crow that he's riding. <laughs> yeah, true. That's fair. <laughs> Where it's just like, whoop, on the letterbox. But why? Someone's going to have to clean that up later. Oh. Man, if I had a stand, I would use that for all sorts of cleaning I didn't want to do. You'd just be like, ahem. Well, especially oh. if it's got intense speed and precision. I could just like read a book next to the shower while Star Platinum just went, shh, got it all done in half a second. Yeah. Time stopped. Wouldn't even read a page. Yeah. Well, that doesn't really count. <laughs> Do you imagine being able to stop time so you could do all the household chores in like 10 minutes? So, Nick. What? Yoshikage Kira has started a new life in the Kawajiri household. He has. Yoshihiro Kira is on the loose with the arrow and a crow. He is. Our protagonists have searched Kira's house and found not much of use now that the arrow got away from them. Uh, no, they found some clippings, Liam. Please. What do you think is going to happen next time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, the 100th episode, which is entitled... Oh, now, the title of this episode, um, would you prefer the... Um, Spoilerific? The, no, the Japanese variant or the English variant? Uh, which one makes more... Se- I'm assuming the Japanese version makes more sense. I'll give you both. I'll give you the Japanese first, okay, which I right. suppose is... The proper name of the episode, but if you need it, I'll explain what it means. Okay. The next episode is called Janken Boy is Coming. Okay, give me the English version. <laughs> so Janken is the Japanese equivalent of rock, paper, scissors. So, um, per, you know, the, um, the Invincible Trio manga translation I referred to a few times? No. Um, which is where we were referring to, like, Jotaro's watch banter last week from uh... the, those manga panels. Uh... Okay, well, they they translated it as RPS Kid is coming. RPS being shorter and easier to write than Rock, rock paper, paper Scissors. scissors. Rock Paper Scissors Boy is coming. Yes. <laughs> Thought I had any fucking clue what was going to happen. <laughs> you think you got a handle on this show? <laughs> Damn it! Every time I'm like, okay, I've got it. It's like, oh, by the way, uh, there's some kids that yeah. read the future. <laughs> He's coming, Nick. Right about now. Check it out now. The Funk Soul Brother. Right about now. He's not here yet. <laughs> That's a Dylan Moran bit. <laughs> <laughs> the rock, paper, scissors boy is coming. Okay. I mean, I know I keep saying this, but it'd be fun to have like a stand that tries to go against the user. So it'd be like, you play rock, paper, scissors against your stand and see who wins. And that's oh, and happens. you like make bets with it. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, if I win this stand, kind of like how Echoes Act 3 has more autonomy, mm. but like it's a real powerful stand, but it won't always do what yeah. you want. But I reckon what will probably happen, right, is that... Uh, Josuke and Okiyasu are probably going to be at school or something. Playing some rock, paper, scissors. Uh, and then this motherfucker will come by and it'll look like the rich kid who's all like, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, an, it's another Josuke and Okiyasu want money episode. Yes. Uh, they're all like, man, I feel really bad about Shigechi being dead. Yeah, who's going to give us money now? Yeah. Uh, so they'll they'll see this kid who's all like playing rock, paper, scissors. And they're like, oh, he looks really rich. What if we made Why? a bet? They call him the rock, paper, scissors kid. <laughs> It'll be like Okiyasu will be like, hey. No, Josuke will be like, hey, who's that kid? And Okiyasu will be like, ha, Josuke, you idiot. That's Rock, Paper, Scissors, kid. They say he's never lost a round of Rock, Paper, Scissors before. So, okay. 
Interesting. I'm going to go do anything else now. Yeah. And then it's a Makayasu episode. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kid, you want to play rock, paper, scissors? All right. Rock, paper, scissors. Hey, where's your hand gone? What? Ha- oh, God. So then is I don't know. So maybe like it takes his body parts. Yeah, so that'd be fucking hilarious. Um, no, so probably what will happen is they'll be like, why don't we make a bet that'll make this rock, paper, scissors match more interesting mm. to make more money? Because, you know, Joe Scale will probably have spent stuff sure. on shoes. Yeah. Um, and he'll be all like... Yeah, let's make a bet, kid. And he'll be like, fine, you can make the bet if so you want. So he's like, I'll give you 100,000 yen and you'll give me your soul. And they'll be like, yeah, sure, we'll give you your soul. Uh, and then... Or it'll be play. like, you'll give me your... You'll give me your your left pinky. And then they win and like he like is compelled to cut off his pinky or something. It's Darby Jr. Jr. Oh, oh my God. How my amazing. uncle was really into card games and my father was really into video games. And I'm really into like playground bullshit. That would be amazing. If it was like Darby Jr. Jr., I would be super happy. But like that kind of idea of, hey, yeah, let's play a game. By the way, the rules are rigged in my favor, mm. but you don't know yet. Yeah. And so it's them trying to figure out, ah. Oh, how is he so good at rock, paper, scissors? Exactly. And his stand like lets him see like two seconds in the future or something. And that's oh, the same maybe. power. Yeah. And then Jodoro comes along. He's like, the world though. He's clearly going for scissors. So I should go for paper. Very well then. I'll go for paper. He's cheating. He's cheating. <laughs> um, yeah. So this fella. I can't believe I just said he's clearly going for scissors. I should go for paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tactical gambit, Nick, but it's sure to pay off. Um, Jotaro wanted to lose against Darby, so then he lost on purpose. So this Rock, Paper, Scissors kid, mm-hmm. do you think he's one of these um, Yoshihiro Kira boss gauntlet stand users? No, I think he's pre-boss gauntlet. So this is while he's setting up the boss gauntlet. Yeah, this is why. He, this is while he's waiting around, just being all like, yeah, I'm going to make the most boss gauntlet. You're, they're all going to fucking see now. Um, Nick is holding his hands together like he's clutching the arrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, he's stabby stabby. Mm-hmm. I'm stabbing the mic. Uh, yeah, he'll stab some dudes and he'll do that. But this is like an interim episode where they're all like, oh, where is he? He could be anywhere. We don't know where he is. We can't kill him yet. All right. I think that's pretty comprehensive. Yeah. It's, we're running pretty long this episode, so let's wrap things up quickly. Um, this has been JoJo's World, our JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Recap and Discussion Podcast. And until next time. To, to be, be continued. continued.